Yesterday we talked about how the Denver Broncos offseason was way better than anyone is giving it credit for, and I ended the video by saying there was a huge caveat as how are we going to replace Josie Jewell, uh, a very serviceable middle linebacker. And the Denver Broncos went out and for half of the cost brought in a guy who I think will be very, very equal to Josie in production. On top of that, we had a top AFC West rival get even worse. So the idea that we... Um, finished last in our division is absolutely bonkers to me. We're going to cover all that and more in this video. If you're new to this channel, I break down all things Denver Broncos. It helps me out a ton if you subscribe. Let's dive into the news of the day. So the big news of the day is that the Denver Broncos signed Cody Barton. Uh, he was first re the replacement for Bobby Wagner and started a bunch of games in Seattle. We're going to look at some film here in a second, and you'll be very familiar watching him Sack Russell Wilson, blow up Javante Williams in space. Uh, crucial fourth down play. So if we look, uh, just really, we're going to look at on paper, size, speed, all of that kind of stuff. If you look, he was picked in the third round by Pete Carroll, brilliant defensive mind. Um, we know, we remember, obviously, Josie was picked again in the fourth round, so he was picked before Josie Jewell. He's about two inches taller than Josie Jewell. He's six, two and a half, but a lot of um, the game um, the game logs have him listed at six, three, but his official combine, he was six, two and a half, where Josie Jewell uh, comes in shorter at six, one. Uh, looking at the 40 times, he's definitely a notch faster than Josie where Josie ran a four eight and he's a four six guy. So that's a noticeable difference. Not one of those hairline differences you only see, um, in a slow motion cam. And obviously, um, well, oh, you didn't see that. So I scrolled down a little. So a four six forty as opposed to Josie Jules four eight forty. Josie Jewel did the bench press 18 times. Uh, whereas Cody Barton did it 30 times. Um, that's, it's a lot of bench pressing, and trust me, I know a thing or two about bench pressing. Now, obviously, um, all of those underwear Olympics, it does not matter whatsoever. It's all about production and what you do on the field. So he played for a couple of years for Seattle for um, Pete Carroll and had some injuries. Um, and then um, let, we're going to take a look here at uh, a couple of his film. And then he went most recently to the Washington Commanders where he led the team in tackles and had something like 121 tackles and he only played 13 games so he had an injury as well uh, a lot of people absolutely love this dude coming out of college including our very own i guess he's not my very own i just love him i wish he was my own uh andrew mace and at mace denver here who said loved cody coming out of utah uh, and even if he earns all of the escalators in his contract he's going to be Barely half of what we would pay Josie Jewell. So we signed him to a one-year, uh, basically prove-it deal. And we know players tend to have that one-year deal as their chance to be like, I got to ball out of control and figure this thing out. I think the other crazy part, we're going to look at some film of him. But the other crazy part is like, do not sleep on Jonas Griffith. Like our, our guy, our first move of the offseason was... Uh, was re-signing him to a futures contract. And you remember that Vic Fangio actually had him listed as the starter for the Denver Broncos over Alex Singleton, whom we all love. We love Alex Singleton. And Jonas beat him out in camp and was actually the starter before he got hurt. So the fact is that I think Jonas would have been a serviceable replacement, but now bringing in Barton, who is taller, faster, and stronger than Josie Jewell, and I'm going to show you right here as we watch a little bit of the film that I, I just found. I think he's, he flashes in stopping the run, and he flashes in his zone coverage. And so let's take a look at a couple of, uh, of these plays. Obviously, you can find great plays of anyone, but these are, are really just showing us that like he's got some potential. So watch this in coverage. Uh, we got a guy in the backfield. This is the New York Giants, Danny Dimes. Watch him make sure that it's not a run play, which would be his responsibility to get the tight end uh, going across the middle, but know that he's also responsible for the inside of the slant. So you watch here um, as, he, as here we go. So he's there, there, there. He's covering. So this he's covering here, making sure he keeps the tight end on that little, um, like just dump off route right there, keeping him in front of him. If he, if that's where Danny Dimes goes, Danny knows that's not there. And he dro drops back in space and almost comes up with the interception. Beautiful play right there. Now we're going to go here, playing against a more formidable offense, Jared Goff and the uh, Detroit Lions. So let's watch here. 57 right there. This is, again, where he, when he's with Seattle. You see him up on his toes there. 
react and get that crossing route knowing um, he was responsible for the inside coverage where he had corner help on the outside and he broke that up. Now check this out, this delayed blitz against us. You might remember this. I certainly do where he's able to find the seam and get to Russ in a way that uh, Russ had the blocker. So we have more than enough dudes on the line here to pick up this blitz and watch him just split our guys right here, right? That double team probably didn't need to happen. And look, he splits right in to two unblocked linemen and takes down Russ. Man, I'm not going to miss that for sure. Now, again, watching this, this is against the Denver Broncos again. And watching uh, Cortland, he knows is his responsibilities here. So he is in zone coverage in this play, and his job is to get the middle of the field. If we have any crossers, we don't. And so he knows then that it's probably a dump off to the back, and he stops Javante. I believe this was the fourth down play that led to the uh, infamous massive um field goal that never should have happened you remember when Nathaniel Hackett went for like a 67 yarder or something ridiculous and instead of giving Russ a chance to convert but watch this watch Javante in space we he has blockers like a lot of a lot of linebackers would not be able to make this play to get through the line and get Javante in space so watch this here he goes Boom, blows that up. I mean, the blockers were there. Russ probably should have held it for one more beat to let the blockers get down a second. Usually you don't have to tell Russ to hold the ball for one more second. He usually did that on his own. But just watching that, boom, blows that up in space. Massive loss um, when, when you had that play dialed up to, to blow through. And, you know, PFF ranked our line pretty high, yet he did that. Now this last one is the one that had me actually crazy excited because Javante Williams in space can make a lot of dudes look foolish. And watch Javante have the sideline, and he can cut back up. And this play here on the sideline, where it's just you as a linebacker against one of the shiftiest running backs in the league. I love Javante Williams. And when I, saw, I remember watching this play at the time, I'm like, how did Javante Williams not just toast this dude? Because I'd never even heard of Cody before. Or Coco, I guess, is what we're calling him now, right? And watch, watch this play. So here it goes. Russ has them. It's just them, right? Just them. And there's no reason Javante Williams can't beat a guy like this in space. He uses the sideline to his advantage and takes him down. I mean, that should not have happened, right? So you, you just watch that and, and you feel like, man, faster, stronger, bigger than Josie Jewell. Why couldn't he step in? And, and if he can't, he's on a one-year deal for half of the price of Josie Jewell. So I truly feel like that has been the theme of this free agency for us is that we found guys who are at least like in the same conversation, yet they are a fraction of the cost. And so everyone who's like, oh, we're doing a rebuild. It's not like we're getting horrible players in. We are getting better deals for players who are in the same conversation. And I feel like we did that at safety. I feel like we definitely did that um, at uh, the defensive tackle position as well. And I'm feeling very good. So you just look at his, I mean, the 2022 with Seattle playing right in, stepping in for Bobby Wagner, where there's just that massive shadow. And you have 136 tackles. And I know sometimes that could mean you let your tight end get open and you tackle them and it could have been a, 20 yard gain, but you know, I'm, I feel good about that. And then last year, like I said, 13 games, 121 tackles, that's nothing to scoff at. So I'm feeling very good about Cody Barton, <coughs> excited about having him in Denver. And I think he and Jonas Griffith can hold that down in a way that I don't think we're going to have this tremendous drop off that everyone is predicting. A couple other things that we just absolutely have to go through. We have talked a lot about what could Cortland Sutton get in the open market for trade value. And last night, I was blown away as I was about to fall asleep refreshing Twitter and seeing that Keenan Allen, Jim Harbaugh, shopped and, and traded Keenan Allen for a fourth rounder to the Bears. Like, that is crazy for a number of reasons. Uh, number one is that he's still got it in the tank. Like, we've played him. He is legit. He is good. And so the fact that he only got a fourth rounder is crazy. The other thing is that he was definitely Herbert's favorite target. You remember the stat before we played the Chargers? Ke uh, Keenan Allen was targeted on half of all of Herbert's throws. So every other throw was to Keenan Allen. And so now if you look at how stripped down the Chargers offense is, it is crazy, you guys. Keenan Allen, out of there. Austin Eckler, Colorado boy, out of there. Mike Williams was the only other uh, receiver who was doing good things, and he is gone. 
And all of this has like me wild, wild, wild take, but I want to throw it on YouTube so y'all can rub it in my face when I'm wrong. Um, is there any chance we have heard Harbaugh just talk up J.J. McCarthy like crazy, um, saying he's the best quarterback in the history of University of Michigan, which is crazy because he played there and so did Tom Brady. So as Harbaugh, who like played in the NFL, to be like, yeah, this guy's better than me. He's better than Brady. Knowing that like Harbaugh has coached a ton of NFL talented defenses and and knows him better than anyone. So could there be any chance that Justin Herbert gets traded? Just keep that in mind that like I'll, I'll say that I think there is a chance that Harbaugh takes uh, J.J. McCarthy and then do you trade Herbert for four first round draft picks, five first round draft picks? Like he could get a haul irregardless. I guess someone corrected me in the comments. Irregardless isn't a word. It's just regardless. So thank you for that. The Chargers got worse. There is no way with all of that offensive talent and the fact that Derwin James, Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, all those guys are just a year older. The Chargers got worse, and we already swept them last year. So we're going to sweep them again this year. So that's two wins penciled in, and I'm feeling very, very good about that. Um, And then just the last piece of news is that all of the rumored free agent quarterbacks that the Denver Broncos were talked about to get, Kenny Pickett, Howell, Garoppolo, all of them are just dropping off more and more. And so I think the Denver Broncos are not going to end up with anyone else other than Stidham. And then it is what happens in the draft. I think uh, landing the fourth quarter, the fourth best quarterback in the draft at the 12th pick, there's no chance now that the f- the fourth best quarterback just falls to us at 12. It seems as if, as if the Minnesota Vikings are stocking up additional first round draft picks so that they can trade that. So are they they looking to trade with the Chargers? I think the worst case scenario would be Minnesota Vikings trading multiple first round draft picks to get to the five, and then with the five, taking JJ or whoever they want, and then the Chargers would have the 11th, and then with the 11th, they could get Brock Bauer. So then Harbaugh would have the tight end that he wants, and and he, you know, he would have probably taken him at five anyway. So I, I think... That's the thing to be worried about is that the Chargers are on an actual rebuild. Like, I'm telling you, the Denver Broncos did not shed that much talent. If I was a Chargers fan, man, we cut talent like crazy. It's an actual rebuild in Los Angeles. It is it is a competitive reset here in Denver, and I think that's that's really different. So Garoppolo's gone, Howell's gone, Kenny Pickett out of out in um out in Pittsburgh. And I think the Denver Broncos are going to have to find the quarterback of the future in the draft, or are we really rolling with Stidham and and playing for next year? It is all going to be super interesting to see. Thank you all for riding with me. I'm having a blast doing this in Broncos country. Let's giddy up. Oh, man, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs>